When it comes to practice, there's one thing that almost every guitar player is guilty of doing far more often than they should. And that is too much noodling, not enough playing. What's the difference? Well, to me, noodling is what I do when I wake up in the morning, I see my guitar sitting in its stand, I pick it up and I play something like this. Now, the notes I just played are not important. This is not a lick lesson. Actually, there's two things I didn't do at all when I was playing there. And those two things are far more important than any of the licks that I played. The first thing I neglected to do was keep time. Now, obviously there was no backing track, there was no drum loop, there was no metronome. But not only that, I wasn't even imagining or playing as if there was a metronome running in my head. I wasn't imagining that I was on stage playing a tasteful solo whilst keeping time with a rhythm section and following the chord changes. Which brings me to my next point. The other thing that I neglected to do was play with harmonic intent. If you need to, go back and listen to what I just played. You'll probably agree with me that all of those licks, all of the phrases, could have been played over one chord. So not only was I neglecting to keep time, I was also avoiding the task, avoiding the challenge of playing through any sort of chord changes. That is what noodling is to me. It's mindlessly playing with no rhythmic and or harmonic context. Now, what about the term playing? Well, recently I posted a lesson on a John Mayer live stream and it was about a specific lick that he played. But if you go and watch that full video of the live stream, there's a point at which John mentions he doesn't really practice, he just plays. Now, I've heard Josh Smith say the exact same thing. He doesn't really practice, he just plays guitar as much and as often as he can because he loves it. And when you listen to those guys play, when you listen to them improvise, even if it's just them on their own with no backing, you rarely, if ever, hear them do the sort of thing that I did at the start of the video, which was just playing with no rhythm, no feel, no harmonic intent. So to me, the term playing in this context, when we're thinking about practice or just playing at home by yourself, means playing with those two things in mind, rhythm and harmony. So tomorrow, when you go to pick up your guitar and begin your next practice session, I want you to try doing one of, if not all three of the following exercises. The first of which would be to find a backing track that you want to improvise over and start improvising over it. That might sound painfully obvious, but like I said, there are three exercises I'm gonna recommend you try, so stick around to the end of the video. Recently, I've been taking private lessons again, focusing on how to play over jazz blues progressions, which is something I'm very new to but it's something I've always been interested in and up until now, I haven't made the effort to figure out what I need to practice in order to become good at that. So the other day I searched for jazz blues progressions on YouTube, I found a backing track that I liked and I started practicing my very limited ideas for improvising over a jazz blues progression. So here's me doing just that. <laughs>
ました。Okay, so the playing I just did wasn't great. There were a lot of mistakes. There were parts where I got lost and I had to think, oh, what chord am I playing over? But it was practice. Now there were a couple of points where I had pre-written licks that I had developed as a result of uh, previous attempts at improvising over that same backing track. So it's not all about playing something brand new every single time that you practice improvising over a certain progression. Sometimes it's a good idea to also practice licks that you already know, but in different areas of the fretboard and in different keys. And that's actually a great way of developing new licks and ideas. Despite the fact that the improvising you just heard was not approached with nearly the same level of confidence as the noodling you heard at the start of the video, I know that that was a far more valuable use of my practice time. If you only ever play the things that you're already comfortable doing, you're not going to improve, you're going to stagnate. And I know this from personal experience. Now, once you've played to the backing track, the next step is to play to just the drums alone. So remove the harmonic backing and just play to the rhythm of the drums. I'm sure there's a ton of apps out there for finding different drum beats. What I've done is I've just thrown together some drum loops in Easy Drummer. So now I'm gonna practice improvising over the drums alone, but with that missing chord progression in mind. I'm gonna have to really think about when the chord changes occur as I'm improvising. The benefit of doing this exercise with no harmonic backing is that it forces you to concentrate on your note choices so that the listener can hear the chord changes happening without actually hearing any chords played. When you play to backing tracks that have chords and have bass lines, you don't necessarily have to think as hard about the chord changes and when they occur. I mean, I could go to a blues jam session, I could play a solo and then start daydreaming and I might lose my place in the progression and think, oh, where are we? And then I hear the keyboard player play the five chord and I realize, all oh, right, okay, we're at the turnaround. And then I can react to those chord changes rather than consider what I'm going to play before we get to that point in the progression. Now that's fine to do, but I still believe that playing to a drum loop alone is worth practicing because Whilst you still have something to lean against rhythmically, it removes the safety net of the, of the harmony and now the responsibility to keep that chord progression heard through your note choices alone, that's all on you. You might have already guessed what the third and final exercise is. Remove the drums. We've already removed the harmonic safety net, the chords and the bass lines, now we're gonna remove the rhythmic safety net of the drums. This means that not only is the pressure of keeping the chord progression alive through your solo on you, you now have to take responsibility for maintaining the tempo and feel as well. I would recommend playing through your chord progression once or twice before you let go and start improvising, but remember that when you do, your focus should be on one, highlighting the chord changes as they occur through your note choices, through your scales, 
triads and arpeggios, and two, keeping good time and feel. And just as a side note, this applies to multiple genres, regardless of whether you're playing over a jazz progression, a rock song in Mixolydian, or a four chord pop tune. It doesn't matter, same rules apply. I'm demonstrating it over a jazz blues simply because, as I said near the start of the video, it's something that I want to get better at. And in order to do that, I know that I have to put myself through the uncomfortable challenge of daily practice sessions doing exactly what I'm showing you in this video day in, day out. I know that that's what I need to do in order to improve. So with all that being said, I'm now gonna practice improvising over that same jazz blues progression, but without the chords in the background and without the drums. So here we go. Not as bad as I thought that would be, but again, it wasn't perfect, it was practice. I went in without the expectation of that going according to plan, and obviously there was a point there at which I lost track of where I was and I started the progression over again, but that's what happens when you're practicing, you make mistakes. I was trying my best to focus on hearing the chord changes in my head and reacting to them with my note choices. So hopefully you could hear that through my very uh, novice level jazz blues licks. And even though I was making mistakes there and I stopped for a little moment, I remember one of my old guitar teachers telling me that the worst possible thing you can do when you're performing and you make a mistake is to stop playing. You just have to power through it. So try and heed that advice the next time you're improvising on your own without any drums, without any backing track behind you. The idea behind all of this, what everything I've been saying, what it all boils down to is this. If you can get really good at improvising and staying in time and developing good rhythmic feel whilst playing in the most vulnerable scenario to be in as a musician, which is on your own solo, if you can get really good at that, Imagine just how good you will sound with a band behind you. Practice to backing tracks, practice to drum loops, practice on your own, limit the noodling. Do all of those things and I promise you, you will mature as a guitar player and as a musician overall. My name is Ross Campbell. Thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please like it, share it, subscribe, turn on notifications to never miss another video. Do all of that stuff, helps me out. 
And yeah, thank you again. I'll see you in the next one.